Um, I've always said uh, that Andy is my favorite husband of any of my friends, acquaintances, my family, and here's why. I have a couple parties a year. I do remember some guy that ate most of the meatballs, and I'm like, <laughs> like, like and I, I came back and there's this like this the same the meatball guy, the guy with the red hair was underneath the bed helping the kids to try to find the cat and shining a flashlight up, up so they could really see him. I went out and I said, hey, who's that guy anyway? And somebody said, oh, that's Patty's husband. And then I'm thinking to myself, well, he's got a great sense of humor. He's really nice, with exception of the meatball thing. So he, he must not be a lawyer. And then Patty said he was a lawyer. So later on, I'm talking to an administrative assistant. She, she raved about Andy. And did I know that he was a professor at Howard? I'm like, the red-haired, David Caruso, better-looking meatball guy is a professor at Howard? I mean, so every time I met Andy, he was just so nice, so unassuming. You never know. He was like this, you know, really important academician, just ever. And he, Lord knows he would never tell you. You had to find out from someone else. When we learned that he had passed, my parents said, are you kidding me? You mean the man that you didn't realize was a Jewish white male because you thought he was an African American woman until after we told you? And I said, yeah, because Taz had a way of, it's true, it's true, I swear to you. I ne I, we, I never, he never recognized difference because he abhorred, he abhorred the smallness of divisions based on what we look like and where we come from and, and who we love and care for. When I first met Taz, there were a couple of things that made me absolutely certain that he wouldn't survive as a law professor. First was that he wasn't nearly arrogant enough. In fact, he wasn't arrogant at all, and so how could you possibly be a law professor? Uh, and, and the other thing was that he, he liked harmony. He liked, you know, things to be good, and he liked things, people to get along. And the third thing that just didn't make sense was that he simply didn't need to win. Despite all of these omissions from his character, <laughs> he was a terrific success. There are thousands of students that have been affected by, I mean, we had the opportunity to be taught by the country's leading expert in criminal law, and we just are so grateful um, for him, and thank you for sharing him with us. His teaching will live on, so we thank you so much. We didn't really meet until we both got hired at Howard in 1989 after having an extraordinary number of opportunities where we might have met, um, but never did. He told me his life story. I told him my life story. Shit, we said it was the same life story. <laughs> but these habits all formed in the Bronx combined to make him who he was. A wicked smart, unpretentious, self-effacing, ever striving to learn more, always warm, devoted, funny, life-loving, hearty laughing, pure-hearted boy. I never heard him say a mean thing about anybody. And believe me, I encouraged him on many of to take <laughs> Uh, and he never took up, never took me up on that opportunity. One of the things that I'm proudest of, and that I'm very glad he lived just long enough to see, was that he was selected as one of the 26 best law professors in the country. Um, <laughs> law school has a way of making you feel less intelligent than you knew you were when you first started. <laughs> um, but Professor Taz has never made you feel that way. I just wanted to share that he was someone who made us all feel like we were worth the effort that he put in to teach us. Thank you. On his resume, he listed as the last item, science fiction and fantasy in all its forms. <laughs> and he meant he, meant he likes comic books, he likes sci-fi movies. He, but that's not what they thought either. <laughs> and uh, after they hired him, they told him the sole reason he got picked out of the slush file was because they said they had to see a guy who had the nerve to put that on his resume. <laughs> I was one of Professor Tazlitt's students at American University, and I just want to make sure that uh, 
AU is up here representing not just Howard because we <laughs> loved him too. Um, we got him uh, a book actually to read for fun. It was a book on superhero law. <laughs> I didn't know how much Andy was in love with our first dog, who's here, Milana, our female dog, until one day I accidentally checked his Howard website. And after the list of professional accomplishments, he puts, Professor Taslitz lives in Reston with his wife and his beloved dog, Milana, who's named after the half Klingon, half human engineer, uh, Deep Space Nine. <laughs> And uh, he, he uh, used to use real people, including uh, me. He, he would use loved ones in the, the hypos he did on his exams, which of course were always criminal a procedure, criminal law exams. So, you know, it would be like, uh, you know, well, Andy taught us, they couldn't use him, but he'd say something like, uh, oh, Nancy Goldman, you know. Uh, was arrested for committing burglary, and, and he would get a kick out of it. Hello, my name is Nancy Friedman. My maiden name is Nancy Goldman, and I've learned here today that I was a hypothetical in one of Andy's. I think I was a burglar. And now I, I'd like to introduce Andy's cousin, Neil Tazlitz, and like Andy Gavel, they didn't even know they existed until they were adults, even though they, they are actually, I believe, second cousins. Andy had developed uh, carpal tunnel and, and he was looking for uh, someone who made ergonomic equipment. So he found a lawyer named Neil Taslis who just happened to make ergonomic equipment. When I talked to Andy, uh, there was just, in, intuitively, uh, we were on the same plane. It's been said that the uh, purpose of, uh, of a memorial service is really to, uh, uh, to not only honor uh, the, the deceased, but to comfort uh, the people that are grieving. Um, and, and it's also been said that the, those that uh, rest before us cannot, cannot be here to uh, uh, heal uh, the unrest of those left behind. Taz was a colleague of, uh, of my wife's, and when we moved to the area, they were good enough to be one of the first couples to, uh, to welcome us to the area. I don't like losing people, and, and it's heartbreaking losing Taz, but it's also gratifying having known Taz. And my wife, Lynn Halverson, said, there's the family you have, and then there's the family you choose. And Andy was the brother I chose. We'll always remember him as one of the best, very best people I've ever known. A man without an angry bone in his body. Just a wonderful, wonderful person. And he was loved by so many people. And life goes on, but he'll always be a sweet man. If I hadn't met Hope, I wouldn't have my own dogs who were right there, Bolana and Odo. Because of Bolana and Odo, I don't come home to an empty house. And I don't come home to a place without love. 